everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to set up and configure VMware's vSphere hypervisor known as EXXI 5.0. It's a completely free hypervisor offered by VMware and it's an amazing product. I use it all the time for virtualization. So if you're brand new to virtualization, this is a great product to try, cost free, um, and you can install this on so many different hardware platforms. And this is a great way to take those old machines or those servers you have in the corner that are being underutilized. Because if you look at any server at any given time, it is so underutilized. Like I have a web server, it's running 95% idle. So I took that server, put ESX on the machine, and I'm putting that on a VM, and then I'm able to run multiple operating systems over that same v uh, hypervisor, and it's great getting great hardware utilization on a machine that was running so idle before. So this is an example of what you can do with it. So just keep watching, and I'm going to show you guys how to set this up and configure it at work or at home. It's super easy, so just keep watching. First thing we're going to do is open a browser and go to the VMware site. The link is on the screen. It's also in the comments. So let's go there. If you're new to VMware, you either have to create an account or uh, if you already have an account, go ahead and log in. Once you log in, you're going to go ahead and download the ESXi 5.0 ISO image. And we're also going to download the VMware vSphere clients. Once you have those downloaded, go ahead and take that ISO image and put it on a CD. Now go ahead and pop that CD into the computer and we're going to want to boot off the CD. You should come to this menu. We're going to go ahead and select the ESX installation option. The ESX installer will begin to load. This will take just a few minutes to complete loading before it prompts you for some installation options. You will come to the black and gray welcome screen. At this point, you'll be prompted to press F11 to continue installing. You will be prompted to accept the hard drive selection, then enter a root password for your ESX server. And now you're asked to enter confirmation of installation. The installation itself should just take a few minutes. It's not long at all. Once the installation is complete, the machine is going to go ahead and restart. And on reboot, it's going to load the VMware 5.0 ESXi. On this configuration page, you can see the F2 key will give you the customized option. Go ahead and press that. It will prompt you for your root password. You can go through the options here and choose to configure the management network. It will let us select between DHCP and a static IP address. I'm going to choose to select the static IP address. I'm going to go ahead and hard code that. Then I'm going to give it a host name. I'm going to name it Starbuck. And I'm going to just going to go through here and exit to log out. It will prompt me to save. And now once we go back to the main configuration screen, it will notice the changes have been posted. Now it's time to install the VMware vSphere client that we downloaded earlier. We're going to go ahead and run that installation. It just should just take a few minutes. The program is done installing. We're going to go ahead and run the program and we're going to log in. We're going to put in that static IP address we just entered. We're going to log in with root and the password we have set. Now let's go ahead and create our very first virtual machine by right clicking on the IP address and selecting new virtual machine. We'll be prompted for a typical or custom virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and select custom so you can see all the options. Now I'm going to go ahead and select my data storage which is just the disk space on our ESX server. In more advanced configurations it could be some kind of network storage like NFS, some kind of SAN solution through fiber or iSCSI. Let's select our operating system type. I'm going to choose Linux, Red Hat, Enterprise 32-bit. Now you have the option to allocate how many CPUs and how many cores you want to allocate to your virtual machine. I'm going to select one CPU and one core. I'm going to allocate one gig of memory to my virtual machine server only has one network card, but if there were more, they'd be listed here in the drop down menus. Now you're able to select the type of SCSI controller for your virtual disk. Here you can select to create a new virtual disk or an existing virtual disk. I'm going to go ahead and select a new virtual disk, so create a new virtual VMDK file. 
now get to select the size. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 16 gigs. And then select the default options here for advanced configuration. And now I'm complete. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And my very first virtual machine is done. Let's go ahead and open up our console and power up our virtual machine. I'm going to select our media for installation. You would either select the data store if you have stored your ISO in there. But I'm going to select connect to local ISO image off localhost. I'm going to go ahead and click open. I'm going to send an alt control delete signal. This will restart my machine without resetting it and disconnecting my media. Watching guys. Thank you for watching guys. I hope this was helpful. If you haven't started doing virtualization, start today. It's amazing way to utilize your hardware. You know, you guys spend tons of money on this hardware. Might as well get your most out of it, right? So definitely try to do some form of virtualization wherever you are. And I'm sure you would love it once you start. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you need any other tutorials on virtualization or some tricks and tricks I do in VMware, I'll try to put out that video maybe in like a week or two, and I'll definitely let you guys know if you guys subscribe, I, you'll get an update. So go ahead and subscribe. Thank you. And thank you.